we can't have enough people sharing the message of agriculture across this state. And the more we have, the more successful we'll be. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Louisiana Farm Bureau podcast. I am your host, Carl Wiggers, and today I'm joined by the newly elected, I guess you're 50 days in now-ish, uh, Farm Bureau President, Mr. Richard Fontenot. Richard, thank you for joining us on the podcast. Welcome. Well, thank you, Carl. Appreciate the invite and always look forward to seeing what we, what we can share. Well, you've been a, a hard, I don't want to say a hard man to schedule. You've been a busy man. It's uh, It's been a very active uh, first month and a half. First month and a half. You've done a lot. You've traveled to D.C. I've got a list here that probably doesn't encompass everything, but you've gone to D.C. You've hosted, helped host a farm bill roundtable with a couple senators. You had multiple farm visits. You've also had an executive committee retreat. Now this week we've just finished up our first board meeting as president. Well, I guess first one in office, technically separated from the convention board meeting. And now you're also a farmer and you've been you know, neck deep in, in rice harvest throughout all of this. How has this first, you know, month and a half been? Has it been just straight up drinking from a fire hydrant? You know, that's that's a good analogy. You know, if my predecessors told me, said, you just get ready. Just, you're not going to drown, but uh, but it's coming. And uh, and boy, did it come. Uh, but we we just having a ball. Uh, it's been a good family opportunity for us. Uh, do a little bit of traveling and, and just a, the, the fact that I get to interact at the levels we do. Uh, which to have folks like you and the rest of your crew and all the different department heads and just kind of understanding where everything is at this level is a little different than I've been accustomed to. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we've got a lot of things going on in agriculture, and it's, it, it, takes some, it takes some direction, and the people are looking for leadership. And uh, it takes time to get all those, all those T's crossed and I's dotted, and, uh, and that's what we do. So we're trying to do that and finish taking in a crop. Hopefully we'll finish here in the next day or so. Uh, on the rice side, and then uh, we'll uh, mediate a little more Farm Bureau leadership, and then we'll come back and try to get a bean crop. But uh, it's been fun; it really has. How is your rice crop looking? Are you are you optimistic about it? Is it? Yeah, it's uh, you know different parts of the state. It's got to affect a little differently. I know the yields have, have, have tapered off toward the latter part of the year. We had some disease disease came in on a lot of folks, but uh, it's not the best crop we ever made. But it's not the worst. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, I'm hearing some stories, some friends south of me, that, uh, that, that their yields have really diminished uh, from what the beginning of harvest looked like. So it's uh, it's going to be a, it's, you're going to have to have a pretty tight belt in the rice industry this coming year. Probably not just rice, but this really isn't a, a crop podcast. But I'm uh, just curious, since I was asking, I was on your farm last week and didn't even think about asking how actually is the harvest looking. Yeah. Um, but yeah, prices seem to be terrible everywhere for. A lot well, of folks. You know, everything softened up. We, in the board meeting, we had our grain marketing department came in, gave us a presentation today, and just the fact that, you know, there's some potential out there in terms of crop, but, but at the same time, we, we don't have enough sales and markets to, to bring that premium we've had in years past. Mm-hmm. So uh, the bottom line is going to be a, uh, it's gonna be a little tougher to get that, that black ink on the paper this year. Uh, we need a little bit of luck, a few more markets, and strengthening a little prices, maybe later this fall, post-harvest is what we're hoping for. Uh, if not, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a little tough spring coming into it. Let's back up the clock a little bit, roll back to the end of June. You became the president of Louisiana Farm Bureau. How was convention for you? I mean, I'm sure stressful, busy. I know there's a lot more than just becoming president and, you know, the voting delegate session where that happens. There's a lot leading up to that commodity meetings, you know, policy setting. What was convention like for you this year? I mean, what? From your perspective, how, how, how did you feel convention went? Well, I, I, again, hats off to the staff that put together the convention this year. Uh, I tell people all the time, it's like ducks on the water. You see the ducks swimming, you never see the little feet spinning at 100 miles an hour. Uh, keep it moving. Ooh. And it might be a little biased, but I thought this convention went really smooth. Uh, we had a really good attendance, uh, some of the best numbers we've seen in a while. We tend to see that during an election year. We had quite a few elections. Uh, three of them had opponents to it. But we have elections every year. And uh, we had a lot of, of, I would say, youth and, and activity and innovation. We had congressional leaders coming in. 
you know, we had the president of the American Farm Bureau was there giving us some farm bill talks and understanding the dynamics and the challenges, not only here in Louisiana, but in D.C. that we're facing. So I think the relevancy of the topics and the election and a combination of the things going on brought a lot of merit. And, and that's what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to talk about agriculture, understand it. And, and we wrapped up, like you alluded to, with an election and some policy development so we can protect our, fo- our food and our families in agriculture for years to come. We have to go through these processes. And I think we had a very good policy development p- portion of the, of, of the convention. And at the end of the day, we had an election. We got some new leadership, and we're excited with that new leadership brought to the table, our delegates put. Uh, it's a younger uh, executive committee than we've had in the past, but at the same time, it's, it's very motivated, very fresh, very very energetic, uh, and very skilled leadership folks that are up in there. So we're excited what we have, and we got some new board members put in place, and we're excited with those. Some have been here before, and some have never seen the boards before, and and we just wrapped up a, a, a state board meeting here, and everyone, this was kind of my inaugural meeting in the uh, new building, if you will, in our boardroom, and uh, and uh, I'm, I'm kind of biased, but I think it went kind of good. Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone seems excited. We had we had good reports, good messaging. And uh, I think we're doing what we're being asked to do as we represent agriculture. A lot's happening. It feels like a lot's happening. It, like you just mentioned, it's the first first board meeting in the building for a lot of these you know new executive committee members, new board members. Also, there's a lot of commodity and policy type stuff. I know Andy talked for a long time yesterday, Andy right. Brown. Uh, about different things that we're doing for commodity commodity committees and things like that. That's where that policy development you talked about starts. Does that does the policy development you talked about, you know, you know, coming to a, a bunch of policies and voting on a bunch of policies that protect farming and protect the families of farms that farm. How, do you do you love that kind of stuff? You know, it's it's I have a passion for it because it's boots on the ground. You know, at the end of the day, you know, I don't care where you're at. You tend to get isolated to some of the local issues on occasion if you're in Baton Rouge or you're in D.C., whatever it may be. And that's the beauty of Farm Bureau is we are grassroots, boots-on-the-ground kind of program. So if it's a particular region or parish, whatever it may be, that issue gets brought all the way up and gets attention. And, and we look at derivatives, how we can accommodate and, and not necessarily solve it, but we're going to address some issues whether it be a zoning issue, whether it be a, a, a permitting issue, or whether it be a foreign policy issue as it relates to foreign bill safety net topics, all those components come up so we don't leave anybody out. And, and, and that's the beauty of it is, is we, we, everybody gets to play at the table and be part of the process so at the end of the day you have a better product and you're more consistent in your messaging. And I need all the input we can get, all of us do, over here in Baton Rouge, wherever we're at. And that input allows us to bring better messaging, more consistent, and be more direct with our effects long term. Yeah, that's really great. You talked about boots on the ground. Let's shift to some of the other stuff. Less about a little bit less about you. It still involves you, but one thing you one thing on my list of your things that you've been a part of this this first fifty days been a bunch of farm tours, a bunch of meeting and and hearing from those boots on the ground. Uh, we had the farm bill listening uh, roundtable that happened here in the state office. And you had farm tours on your farm and neighbors, you know, with multiple different groups. How important is that part of what Farm Bureau does? You know, one of the first trips I took was uh, after getting elected was spend five days up in D.C. with some staff visiting our congressional leaders and, and, and their staff and sharing some concerns and issues that came out of the convention and, and, and some things going on in Louisiana at the same time. And then, as you alluded to, so you build those relationships, but at the end of the day, when you could put boots on the ground, I invited every staffer that I attended that said, look, if you're ever down in the district and you want to see what it's all about, just give us a call. And, and they did. They down for the August recess. We probably hosted uh, a dozen or more different staffers from various offices, uh, I mean, from staff from the, from the House Ag Committee to, you know, well, I think next week well, we have some some staffers from Representative Scalise's staff coming down. The speaker sent half of his staff, yeah. you know, some of the local guys and, and folks that have never seen the cross. But 
when you can take someone and you can show them the tangibles, put their hands in a, in a, in a bowl of rice, this is long grain rice, this is how we grow it, or these are soybeans, or this is crawfish, or this is sugar, or, the, or this is whatever it may be, whatever they're called. Anytime you can put a tangible to them, when, you, when they're trying to articulate that message for you in D.C., you have that vested interest in them, and, and they're going to they're gonna help sell that message and make sure that your true concerns are shared because they have those connections at the ground floor. So the biggest thing we can do is to share our story, but it's really good when we can show our story and experience that story with these folks, I think is the, is the best thing that we can do in terms of advocating and educating. Well, you said it right there, experience. What Andy Brown said this on my, in my story I did from that one of those farm tours. He said, we can, people, people go every day, all day to DC or to these district offices and say, here's my problem. But he said, very rarely do those same folks turn around and invite them to come and see where that problem resides yeah. and put their hands in the rice or get in the combine. And there's, there's an experiential aspect to that where, you know, somebody, I have a video, I have a shot of one of those staffers from DC who's like filming her first time in a combine and like that sticks with people you know it does it it's does. hard it's hard to argue with experience we had a young lady with the, with the house ag committee that that specializes in some of the nrcs programs and the equip csps and some of the conservation programs that, that a lot of us participate in and i was able to show her some of the structures that are used in the program and she says that's what it does and and you see the light bulb go off on what a pipe drop actually is and the and the function of it She's been talking and fighting for it and trying to get as far as in all these different programs, but she saw the program on the ground. She saw the finished product, and it made sense. And she's like, oh, yeah. Light bulb goes off. You put a tangible in their hands, and, and they had that experience. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I think you have something that's, that has some longevity to it. As someone who helps tell that story from our communications department, it's really nice having farmers like you. And uh, I went got to visit with David Smith on that one of those tours, and – he, he got to just tell his story and he said, getting to talk to them face to face and like show them my farm he said, I just feel like I'm being heard. And I feel like as a member of the Louisiana Farm Bureau, that's valuable, but also for the staffer, for the person on the other side of that equation, they want to hear that. They want to hear those stories, those, that, that feedback from uh, their constituents or their, you know, their boss's constituents. So thank you for doing that. I know that's, that's yeah. huge. And, I know you're passionate about doing that, whether it's staffers or whether it's junior high kids from a school down the road. Like I know that something you're passionate about. So thank you for doing that. We talked about convention some, we talked about uh, the new leadership. I know one of the things that you did in the first few weeks and was get the new executive team, executive committee together to say, Hey, what's working, what's not working. You know, what are some things that we can maybe do to grow our, our, our membership, our volunteer leaders, and how can we better equip? And I know that's some, part of that like learning process you've been drinking from the fire hydrant idea. And um, one thing I've noticed is you're trying to include that team and include the board and include our members. And I think that's very awesome. What are you excited about? You know, something from that that experience or something that that you're learning about in board this week? What What are you looking forward to? Uh, with this new leadership, with, you know, this new role that you're in? A lot of people ask me, what are you going to do? I said, I'm just a representative. You know, I, I represent 147,000 members, but also represent an executive committee and also represent a, a state board that, that, re, that has districts throughout the state. My messaging is, needs to be their messaging, and, and the only way to do that is inclusion. Uh, and, and opened up. I mean, the first thing I did in, in the, when, when I got to the office over here was put a wedge under my door because I want people to come in and out. It's not a closed, I have an open door policy. I want everyone to be at the table. I believe in round tables. I believe in open discussions. And, you know, you alluded to the executive committee coming in, and that's one of the things we want to do. What's some strategic things we can do? Not that they haven't been thought of, but I want everybody's input and what's your priorities of, of change that you see as a, is, is it immediate action, short-term, one to five? What's a long-term goal? 
so that collectively we can get kind of consensus. So, okay, well, let's work towards that. How can we get that? And then we'll 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 double back with leadership and department heads and say, have y'all thought of this? How are we getting here? So once we get our volunteer leaders and our staff on board, all of a sudden we're moving this train and all together in the right direction. And I think we're going to make the progress. And then we can we can carry that on in our messaging, in our actions. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of areas in the state that are very active, but we also have areas in our state are not as active as others. So how do we, how do we engage those? What, what, what is missing to entice the, these local boards to, to take part in what we do more than they're currently doing? And, and how can we strengthen staff's activities in accomplishing those things? So that's kind of where we're looking at, uh, 30,000 foot level, but we're going to bring it down pretty quick, but I want everyone engaged. You know, we have such a good message. I think everyone in agriculture should be a member of Louisiana Farm Bureau because we represent one and all. And there's nothing, there's not a closed door to any parish, to any county, and, and other states have the same thing. If we're all at the table, we're going to be better off at the end of the day for agriculture. Uh, I should have asked you this earlier on. For someone that doesn't know you, someone that hasn't seen any videos introducing Richard Fontenot, I know you as a man that's been involved in Farm Bureau your entire life in one <laughs> way or another. What is it about Farm Bureau that lights you up, that, that has always called to you? Probably the thing that, that, that captivates me with the organization as a whole is we make a difference. And, and we, can, we can be part of the rulemaking process. We can, we can shift it, direct it, pull it. We can be at the table, as we alluded to earlier, in the policy. And we can guide people so that the true intent of what our needs are are met. And not many places you can be a part of the making of the rules. You know, I go back to the old story years ago. Somebody asked, well, why I like to do it? I said, well, if I can be a part of the making the rules of the game, I can be more effective in the game. Mm. This allows us to be more effective at the end of the day because we're helping not changing, but we're helping guiding the rules so we can be more effective in what we do, especially with our southern regional impacts and agriculture mix that we have in South Louisiana. It's unique as it relates to the rest of the state. So it's very important that we're at the table when we work on these national agendas and topics of that nature. Looking back at the last 50 days, again, a lot going on. What's something that stood out to you uh, as a highlight? I mean, I guess thinking from July 1 on, I mean, getting that, that vote of confidence from your peers and the voting delegates, I'm sure, is a, is a highlight, obviously. But from that point forward, what are these trips or visits or, you know, any event, does any event stand out when you, when you look back at the last month and a half and say, man, what a cool experience or what a encouraging moment or does anything stand out to you as something that's just like, yes, this is awesome. You know, on the on the trip up here for this board meeting, Rhonda and I were driving up, and I just looked at her. I said, you know, I said, this is almost surreal, you know, because I, I am very humbled in this role because it's it's definitely a privilege and an honor in, in a multitude of ways. But the what Form Bureau stands for and what we represent and and the and the and I must say the tentacles of our reach within Louisiana agriculture and within politics as a whole you know I, I did some work with the commissioner of agriculture earlier today and here on some of the stuff he's working on and to have that communication and that 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 working relationship across lines we had the lsu ag center folks here yesterday at the board meeting and 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 dr lee and, and his staff and what we can do and what we want to build and and be a part of that process that's motivating and 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 probably the other thing and, and it's, it's going to sound kind of interesting is I didn't realize staff was as talented as they are. They they just looking for that motivation and encouragement and say, well, let's go. And and it's like a slingshot. Uh, and that's the most surprising thing that walking through is 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 interacting with all the different agencies because we wear a lot of different hats in this role. And everyone that we, we we looking for that motivation, looking for that next level, where are we going from here, and everybody's ready to go. And, and energetic and excited. So that's the fun stuff I'm, I'm really enjoying about it. Looking ahead, what's on the radar? I know 
crop wise, you said y'all are finishing up in the next day or two and hopefully getting the beans soon as president or as a farmer, as dad, what's, what's next for you? Well, we got a lot of things. We want to take some of the stuff we worked on here. I, I want to work on some of our strategic planning and get some clarification on that and some direction. Uh, we're going to try to develop some, some zoom meetings, if you will, and reach out to some of our county presidents or parish presidents rather, uh, where we can where we can do some interactions because I want to reconnect Baton Rouge with every parish president. I, I want that opportunity. I don't want to meet just once a year at convention. I want to have interactions. It might be quarterly or whatever it may be. I, I want to get a good pulse of what we got going on in the state because unfortunately, you talked about it earlier today. We do have a financial situation developing with 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 commodity prices going down. Production costs have not gone down. They haven't reciprocated that. So we're going to have some dynamics coming facing Louisiana agriculture here shortly. And the fact that we don't have a farm bill and a proper safety net in place right now, that is a critical component of what we need to concentrate on moving forward so our producers can get a crop loan in 2025. There is a visit with some of our commodity department and some southern collaborations, and we, we're trying to get something done. We have a House version that addresses a lot of our needs, but our friends on the Senate side haven't reciprocated those communications with us and ideas yet. And we, we're going to try to, moving forward, that's probably one of our top agenda items is, is to get that safety net in place so our producers can make a crop in 25. Not to get too political, you talked about Farm Bureau as a very political, uh, politically connected organization an engaged politically engaged organization but right around the corner from our october board meeting is also election time yeah. how important you know as an organization to be engaged but also as individuals as farmers as folks involved in agriculture to be engaged and to be part of that process you know it we have to be engaged at all levels you know we, um, we had american farm bureau visit call the other day and I visited with the president from Minnesota. We talked about one of the vice president candidates, and we had a, a gentleman president from Ohio as well, and and shared their experiences with both of the vice president candidates as it relates to agriculture and their affiliations in the campaign as it comes to the presidential election here coming around the corner. Mm -hmm. Agriculture needs a seat at the table, and both of those seats are very critical in the success of what we're able to do. People need to be engaged. I'm not saying vote for one or vote for the other, but you need to make sure your vote is heard and your voice is heard throughout the process because without that, we're going to be in a, in, in a situation where we're, gonna, we're a small majority of the population, less, less than 2%, but we need to show up. We need to vote. We need to share with our friends and families the important things to us and what affects agriculture long term so that we can move forward and, and make progress for years to come. It's not just a presidential election. There are down ballot item uh, elections that happen that that matter sometimes even more. You know, on, on that local level, I know yep. you're very engaged in Evangeline Parish with your police jury, with you know those types of city council type type groups and organizations. That's another place to engage, and probably on a local level, not farm bill, maybe not global trade, but on you know parish road system <laughs> issues. You yeah, we have a huge impact in that that area as as farmers that depend on that that yeah. those roads. You know, the, the local I mean, the local municipalities can use a lot of guidance on a tape because they don't necessarily have expertise that we must possibly might have. You know, I'm very fortunate I have local folks that reach out to us and and look for guidance on certain topics as it relates to agriculture, and that's what we want to do. We want to be the it, we being Louisiana. We, we want to be the ones that, that are contacted and reached and said, this is, does this affect agriculture? Yeah, it does. Okay, well, let's go this direction where we have minimal impact. We want to help guide them in their decision-making processes or, or be part of the process, run for a police jury seat, run for a district councilman seat. And, and those opportunities allow us to make sure agriculture is available, agriculture is accessible. At the end of the day, we have the resources to support them in terms of educating and make sure we get the right messaging across. Yeah. One thing I wanted to kind of finish with here, Richard, and I know this is something you're very passionate about is getting, um, not just politically engaged, but engaged in farm bureau, finding that place to serve, even at your parish level, at your commodity issues based level. What would you, uh, I guess, what's your message to those folks out there listening that says there's not a place for me to, to plug in there. They don't need my input. 
the Farm Bureau doesn't need me. There's there's a board that's just fine without me. What do you? What's your message to that farmer? Because I know you I know you you care about that person and you want to draw them in. Look, we we're all players in the game at the end of the day, and and yes, each county has 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 a board, but each county can more than likely bring in more board members or have more engagements, whether it be at the table with them as a board member or, or ex officio as an advisory capacity. But we also, within the state, we have a lot of things. We have commodity issues. We have, you talked about an issue it, as it relates to whether it could be environmental, whether it be ag technology, a lot of different components that are not necessarily crop specific that need a lot of participation that we, we need folks showing us where it is. So as it relates to agriculture, and, and if anyone wants to get involved, there's opportunities there. It's not in the hardcore traditional lines like this. Of, well, I, I don't grow rice, so I can't do this. Well, there's a place for everyone at the table. You just have to be willing to go in and, and contribute and be patient and be part of the process your leadership skills and your information will be engaged, listened to, and then from there we're gonna we're gonna grow, we're gonna develop, we're gonna direct, we're gonna we're gonna allow you to to use your expertise, whatever they may be, in the proper fields because we can, we can't have enough people sharing the message of agriculture across this state, and the more we have, the more successful we'll be. Thank you so much, Richard. Is there anything else you want to add? You want to share about that that's important to you? Well, I just want to give a shout out to my crew back at home, you know, my brother and the rest of the crew that, that, that pick up the slack for me to have the opportunity to come up here. Uh, none of this would be possible if, if I didn't have that support system back there and those guys doing what they do. I, I appreciate that and, and giving me this opportunity. Yeah, this presidency, I'm sure you've learned it already, as we've talked about, it takes time, it takes time away from the home, away from the family. So thank you for that commitment. I know I know it's a sacrifice, and I know it's a sacrifice on Miss Rhonda and Lance as well. Um, so thank you, to, I guess, the entire crew. Thank you for, for allowing Mr. Richard to be our leader and, and guide this organization where we all want it to go, and that's to help more and more farmers and ranchers and people in rural Louisiana. If this is your first time listening to the podcast, please subscribe wherever it is you're listening. If you're watching this on YouTube, give it a like and subscribe to our channel there as well. We'll try to have more of these regular stories, interviews with Mr. Richard, as much as we can to talk about issues that are out there in the field, whether it be farm bill updates or election updates or whatever it may be. So subscribe so we can have more of that to you as quick as possible. Also, if you want to learn more about Richard and his uh, farm, we have some stories that I'll link in the show notes below. Again, Richard, thank you so much. We'll see you next time right here on the Louisiana Farm Bureau podcast.